Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Knit Girls, episode 138. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. And she's in my house, and I'm never letting her leave. <laughs> if I disappear for all time, I'm in Leslie's basement. <laughs> Um, so yes, Laura is here for a couple days and then she's going to see her family and then she'll be back for a couple days before she has to go back to the job. True story, yeah. So, um, yay, less editing. For me. <laughs> yay. And, um, yeah, it's good to have Laura here. I wish she'd hurry up and freaking move already. <laughs> but... We won't harp on that because that'd get real boring for you really quick. It's boring for me already. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll go ahead and talk about works in progress. Do you want to go first? Sure. I'm working on some socks out of Magic and Moonshine. They are afterthought heel socks and that light green stripe that doesn't look like any other color in the sock is where my afterthought heel is going to be. And I kind of guesstimated placement on this because I was on a plane. <laughs> So we're going to see if that works out. If it doesn't so, fit you, it'll fit somebody. I figured this is how I did it. I was like, my hand is about the same size as my foot. Kind of. I don't know. <laughs> That's how I tried to okay. figure it out. So You can always make a deeper heel. Because I could, or... I could go like that and be like, it's almost the same. That no. is not an exact measurement. <laughs> no, it's not. This is but... why I need like a... The tattoo on your arm of the inch measurements. <laughs> Although really, if you don't know how long it's going to be, yeah, it's not going to help you at all. <laughs> it's not going to help me. So I just got to the ribbing on that. This was mostly knit on the plane from uh, Memphis to Atlanta and then from Atlanta to Philly. Philly. And there were lots of delays, so I got lots of knitting time. She got in so, at 1 a.m. I did. Saturday morning. I was not the one picking it's her up. Sparkly. Becky picked me up. And then we went out to the Oregon Diner, which is a delicious eating establishment. It's a diner in Philly. And we ate breakfast or lunch slash dinner, depending on who you were. I ate dinner, they ate breakfast. And then I hung out with them most of Saturday, which was tons of fun. We got to go to Ikea. And there were snowflakes. It was very exciting. I haven't been there since October-ish, I think. Like it was actually snowing outside. Oh, there were snowflakes okay. in Ikea. I thought you meant they were decorated for... No, that'd be fun though. But um, that's my only work in progress. It's the only thing you brought with you, or? Yeah. Well, I have more yarn to knit other things. Once you finish? Uh huh. I brought um, some Vesper Holly and the Ivy that I've had bald for four years now that I'm finally going to try <laughs> to knit at some point. Are you gonna, is that gonna be your Christmas day? Yeah, that's gonna be my on? Christmas day cast on that I do every year. I cast on a new pair of socks every year. On Christmas Day, so that's the plan for that. I was hoping to get these done by Christmas Day, but this is the first one, so I highly doubt that. But I do have other needles. I brought my signature case with me. So, hmm. and these are on signature size ones because that's the only sock size they have right now. Yeah, I brought my um, double points with me. Oh, okay. Um, I only have one work in progress as well. Um, this is the right front of my Livingstone sweater that I'm Yay. working on. And Livingstone cardigan by Amy Miller. I like this one. And so it's a very um, rustic, kind of kick around sweater. That's the intent. And I finished the back of it. Um, Earlier this week, because I this is the first time I've sat in it in a couple days at least, because my house needed to be deep cleaned. And then you and Kobe put together a 550 we did. piece today, puzzle Kobe today. And I put, well, and Laura helped too until she was done with it. <laughs> After 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, it was a little longer than that. But yeah, putting together a puzzle with a kid who's ADHD is interesting. Um, but yes, so I finished the back, and it is beautiful. And I love it. And there is one mistake in one of the cables, and I'm not going to tell you where. Because if I don't, you probably won't even see it. So, um, I'm knitting the 50-inch size because it's intended to be worn with about 4 inches of positive ease. And that's a little bit more than I need, but it's, that's, there were, the sizes were like 44 or 50. There weren't anything yeah, in between. Yeah, so, that's a lot of... Um, and I didn't want it to be too tight because I've knit a too tight sweater about four times. Yeah, so, you don't want negative ease on I've a bulky sweater. 
Um, and the reason for the not wanting negative ease on a bulky sweater is because bulky yarn takes up more space. Mm -hmm. So it takes up more on both the inside and the outside, if that makes sense. I know you know that already because we took a fabulous class well, with Jared Flood. The bulky yarn on a bulky girl already, you don't want it too tall. That's just a life lesson learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yes, I love it. I'm using a yarn that I got locally. I don't think you can buy it online. And I try not to do that to you guys because sometimes people will see it and they really want it. But I, I'm sorry. I like this yarn and I want to use you it. You got that at like a farmer's market, a right? Local, well, it was a local craft exhibition. And mostly there was like jewelry and woodworking there. But they did, this one lady, this was like her side, you know, tucked under the table stuff. She primarily sold jams and jellies and stuff. And I got some of those too, but um, yeah. this is from a local sheep, a ram, named Merlin. I love the name. Yeah, he was a boy sheep, so he's the ram. Yeah. Um, other people know this. I don't, <laughs> I've never, like, petted a sheep or anything. So. Really? Although the farm that I got this from, she says I put myself on her mailing list. Uh -huh. She's going to let me know when the lambs are born, and I can go out there and pet the lambs. So. That'll be fun. I'm super excited about that. And I have no FOs besides the back of the sweater, which is not an FO. I have two FOs. Okay. So. Stand by for shock. You're an overachiever. <laughs> I'm not. Yes, you are. They're so wee. I, I love your... Oh. That's your finish. <laughs> what the hell? I have another one to finish up there, too. This one looks more rounded than this one. Perhaps. Like you did the decreases in a different way. No, the so. decreases were the same because this is my secret thing. So I um, ran out of time to finish the second one. I was like at this point before I left. So, um, and it was this big thick book called The Ultimate Mittens by Robin something. And it was very, very cute pattern. But because I was running out of time, I only needed that much of the pattern. I took a picture with my iPhone and I just hmm. off the pattern. But these are Deep Sash Dive. Totally, completely, utterly. This yarn, my mom actually made Becky either a sweater or a pair of socks out of <laughs> in like the early 90s. And these are wee little mittens. So these aren't even for, from your stash. These are from your mom's stash. Yeah, which became my stash because she's like, I don't want this stuff. Here you go. <laughs> um, for my niece, Alice. So this is like a one to three year old size mittens because like their hands stay the same yeah. apparently. It's pretty standard. Out of a DK weight unknown pink yarn uh which did not have a ball band but was in the deep stash so and each man took around 45 minutes to knit so see that's not that's like two episodes of the voice hmm. not even you're addicted to that show i am addicted to that show and then the other thing that i finished is a pattern let me grab the pattern real fast um cookie jar called cookie jar yep and it looks like not that. I put all my, um, so in PDF Expert, you can create folders, and I put everything in folders. Apparently, I had downloaded that one multiple times. That's good to know. But it is by Jolie's Kitchen, and it's called Cookie Jar. It looks like that. And so, look, and there's a schematic, so I knew what I was getting into, so I did the 18 inch around child so it comes in baby toddler child adult small medium adult medium large which are 14 16 18 20 22 inches around and it's supposed to be worn with two inches negative ease but it's a slouchy hat so it's so, supposed to be worn with two inches of negative ease but the child size is 18 inches mm -hmm. that's pretty large for yeah that's what it, well now it seems very large so um and it's got a schematic, and it's a really well-written pattern if you read it, which I don't. Um, <laughs> but so it calls for Eco Plus on size 8 needles, which I used. And this was leftover stash yarn that I've had for a while. And this is for Julia, my other niece, who's three and a half. And so I'm knitting away on it, and we're BKN. And there's actually supposed to be um, a pearl ridge right here. And then this stitch pattern and then another pearl ridge, which I totally got to this point and was like, oh, there was supposed to be a pearl ridge down here. We're just doing the stitch pattern. Yep. And it was actually supposed to be longer than this. It's supposed to be 11 inches. But I was chatting with Leslie online when I was knitting on it and I can put it on 
and it's supposed to be longer than this, then I was like, I think I should stop now. Yes. So it'll be a slouchy, I think it'll be definitely a slouchy hat on a three and a half year old, but it might be a, <laughs> a very <laughs> slouchy. But it might be a hat that she grows into. But we'll see. It's nice and warm because it's that Cascade Eco Plus. Yeah, I like that yarn. Um, and it's, you know, knit on size 8 needles, so it's actually pretty dense. But, yeah, we'll see if it fits. And if it doesn't, then I will knit her another hat. It'll fit somebody. Yeah, it'll be fine. You know, Amy just knit a whole sweater out of that. In yeah. Like a week. Yeah. And she Froggy Monkey. Amazing in it. She always looks amazing in everything. Just a little bit. But, um, it, it'd be nice to be able to knit a sweater in a week. It would. That's just not feasible. Um, bitterness aside, <laughs> and I, I, we both love Froggy Monkey. And she hosts Knitting in Circles with, with her, her husband, husband Darren. Darren. Yes, and they're very sweet. Which is a fabulous podcast. So if, if you don't, you don't watch, them, watch it, you should. you should. Um, so I have no spinning. I have spinning. I did some simul plying from the, I learned from JC Boss, uh -huh. but it's still on the wheel. I'm not going to get it. Okay, that's a cool technique. Yeah. Um, so I started spinning some Huckleberry knits. This was a club colorway from I think October. It's very fall. It is very fall. It's very pretty. It's Falkland, and she has a wonderful club. And the fiber prep on this was amazing. It's 210 yards of a worsted. Maybe light worsted, which is perfect because I'm going to do something fun and fall. That would be an amazing cowl, I think. I think so, too. Especially because you wear cowls in the fall and the colors are mm -hmm. just vibrant. It's very um, Mama Linwin colors. It's beautiful. So I really, really enjoyed her fiber prep. It's Huckleberry Knits. In fact, I enjoyed it so much after I finished spinning this the other day, I went on her Etsy shop and bought some more. So I bought a Polar Silk blend, and she does, um, not Greek or Roman mythology, she does Norse mythology-based stuff, like Loki, and she had one of those up, and it was just stunning, like breathtaking beautiful. One of those that you know you're going to buy. Oh yeah, and it was like it. on four different bases, and it was just so pretty. So, and after spinning this, I was like, I love you and your fiber prep. <laughs> Why did I quit your club? But... I was in it for three months, and I had not spun anything, yeah. so I decided. And she's not one of those people up. yet that you can't get her stuff yeah. if you want it. So, um, and the loopy you carries her as well, yeah. which is she really puts, really she fun. She updates often enough that you can get something. So. Yeah, I like her stuff a lot, and she's got a breed sampler as well, which mm -hmm. is. Very I got cool. the silk breed sampler as a gift from a friend, so. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah, but anyway, there's 210 yards there. So that's it for me for spinning. Oh, it is? Yep. I thought you had one. Oh, that's it. Um, Everything else is at home. Before I forget, this that I'm wearing is a gift from my gay husband, S.O. Lawrence. <laughs> and this is... Um, Piper's Journey. Yes, Piper's Journey. I got this at Rhinebeck, but I just I don't wear shawls very often, but it's chilly enough in the basement that I can wear them without getting too hot. And this is out of Malabrigo something. Rios. Well, and I don't know the color. Um, but anyway, it's beautiful. He did a wonderful job. This is like the seventh one he's knit. The modifications on this one was he did it in stockinette rather than the garter mm -hmm. that it calls for. And I like it a lot. He did a wonderful job. And I wear this all the time at work um, because it sits so nicely on my shoulders without me having to fiddle with it all the time. Paula's got some great patterns. She really does. I've got, I added her... Um, the third one to my wish list just the other day actually and um or i got it gifted the other day maybe that's what it was oh, i'm almost out of yarn on the scheme but yeah this is um so waters and all the details are on the project page for him if you're interested and we have a book review we do have a book review so we are lucky enough to have a great relationship uh with cooperative press especially elizabeth of cooperative press and they sent us a number of books to review, and we get to them as soon as we can. And this is one that we've been meaning to review for a while, so we wanted to go ahead and get it done. And this one is Fresh Hat Designs, and it's a collaboration, collaboration, words, uh, from 10 different designers. For 10 different hats. Yes. And it looks like that. That's what the cover looks like. And um, there are some in here that we really like. There are some that, We've knit that hat before, you know, from a different designer. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I'm gonna look up the price real quick of how much it costs. That's good, and I got, I'll show you guys my favorite first hat, because there are a lot of hats in here that I like, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of different skill levels yes. in here. and there's a bunch of techniques, too. So, over the course of 10 hats, you will learn so much. So this is the left turn at Albuquerque, Alexandra V-I-R-G-I-E-L, and it is out of a Cascade yarn. And it's got like a rib that transforms into a diagonal stitch like pattern. Like a zigzag look almost. So very, very cool. Mm -hmm. I like that one a lot. And that one would be a nice intro, I think. It's probably mm -hmm. one of the least um, complicated ones in the book. Definitely. And they do have skill levels listed at the beginning of each pattern and written and charted directions. Um, huh. I'm trying. I, like, there was a way that I could get into my bookmarks, and now I can't remember how to do it. But Technology. anyway. Then next is the Lishton hat, which is an intermediate skill level. It calls for Greenway Worsted in two different colors, and it's got that cute little button detail with the two colors. Mm -hmm. Very, very cute. So how about I will do, you talk about them and I'll show okay. you. Okay. So this one, um, greener worsted, two skeins, 130 yards of the first color, 32 yards of the second color, and the band is done a seed stitch and then trimmed around with that applied eye cord bind off. Yeah. It's a very trendy looking hat, so I think it'll appeal, especially to younger knitters. So definitely that I cord bind off if you're looking to learn a new skill. We really liked that. And then there's also some other hats like an entrelock hat. There's some definite skill building things. And then we liked the S-A-M-U-I. Toke. 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 I think that's um, what they call hats in Canada. Like a certain kind of it's hat. It's a certain kind of hat, yeah. Like a beanie kind of. And that is out of a very interesting yarn. It's the um, it's a wool ribbon yarn from Art Fibers. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to the next picture. So very very cool, and that uses a Judy's Magic cast on as a provisional cast on, which is one of my favorite ways of doing a provisional cast on. And then stitches are picked up after short rows at the bottom. So basically, the hat is knit going around this way, and then the band is picked up and brought and gone down. Yep. And then we like the Traveling Lace Cap by Rose Beck, which is also an intermediate pattern. So this is more of an intermediate to advanced yeah, book. I agree. Um, definitely, though, if you're looking to advance your skills, I would definitely check it out. And this one is Lace and Rib Spirals. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very cute. Works up out of worsted weight yarn. They use Fiber File Super Squish Worsted, which is super pretty. And then also Pigeoner Studios Bacchus. Very, very nice. And then we really liked for hand spun that Ulan cap by Stephanie Chow. It is a thick and thin single ply chunky weight hand spun, is the yarn that they actually use. So if you're looking mm -hmm. to use up some chunky thick and thin hand spun, especially if you just took a class, let's say, with JC Boggs, and yes. you have some thick and thin singles. Or if you just picked up knitting three weeks ago and you feel like you can't get over that hump of 120 yards. I'm oh, looking at yeah, you. spinning. Yeah, now. definitely. Um, uh, this is only takes between 100 and 120 total. Mm -hmm. And it's 50 of each. It's actually two different colors yeah. that she stripes. So very, very cool. And it's knit sideways and flat and there's no purling yeah, in the entire thing. It's all thing. garter stitch and stockinette stitch. There's no purling. So that's really cool. And we love that redheaded model. I do too. And then there's Nyam by Willy Wormhead. Very experienced hat. It's sideways with cables but also short rows and then the button band. It calls from Biggin Design First Cross Merino which is an Australian merino wool. 115 yards and it takes two skeins. But there's wraps and turns, there's a suspended bind off, which I've never done before, so I might have to try this hat just mm -hmm. to learn that. So very, very neat. And all the hat patterns, we should say, are charted and written right. for the most part, so if it needs to be charted, it's charted as well. There's a great section at the end where it talks about the yarns featured in the book yeah. and where you can get them. And then there's also the cooperative press philosophy on the back cover, which is basically with these, um, this series, the Fresh Design series, they just partnered with designers to build this experience where each copy 
gains the designers more money. Right. They're out, they're not necessarily out for more profit for themselves, although a company has to be able to turn a profit, but they are committed to getting the designers more money um, than they would get selling to a bigger box mm -hmm. um, crafting magazine. And they, um, all of cooperative press really prefers to use more indie vendors, mm -hmm. which is very, very cool. And we support that obviously wholeheartedly. I'm trying, did you ever find the price on it? $16.95. Okay. She's in my space. We but have I the chastity. So um, and it's just one of, one of the whole fresh design mm -hmm. series. They have men, they have a whole bunch of different things. Actually, I want to check out the men issue. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. And they, there's a couple there's a that shawl, we're going to review scarves, soon. There's yeah. uh, boys knits, which has got some great sweaters and stuff. I actually want to knit one of those sweaters. So I wanted to do that. And then there's a tiny treads book, which I'm, I want to knit something, knit something out. Of that. And then there is a very, very needles cool and artifice steampunk. And I'm actually in the middle of reading it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we we're going to review it. It's actually a story. Yes, it's like a novel and pattern book. It's very cool. Very, very cool. Very well put together. Very steampunk, so. <laughs> which makes this one very happy. Yes. So anyway, you should check out Cooperative Press if you haven't already. And if you're looking for a last minute gift, because tomorrow is Christmassy for a knitter, they can down, you can download a gift. Yes. Someone else. And I, I support Cooperative Press very much because I appreciate um, people who want to give back to the creative minds that help make their publications a success. Um, same with um, JC Boggs and the Ply Magazine. I mm -hmm. fully support it because she's you know she's all about the rights of the contributors so and i appreciate that not that i'm a contributor but i appreciate but she wants everyone yes. to become a contributor yeah, so even true. if you're a brand new spinner or someone who's super experienced do you have a story to tell mm -hmm. jc's looking for that so, so yeah and we can talk a little bit about that because when we we were able to take her class last weekend but um and I was surprised to hear this from her, just because I, I don't really have a lot of experience with the bigger magazines, Interweaves, or um, Vogue, The Knitter, or, or yeah. Vogue, or any of that. But um, basically, there's on the Ply Magazine website, there's a Contributors tab, and you can sign up for the Contributors newsletter, which both Laura and I have already done. But basically, what she's going to do is once a quarter, she's going to send out an email that, says, that gives you the mood board for their next available submission issue. Mm -hmm. And so she'll say, we're thinking about um, spinning with color. What are your ideas, pictures, article ideas, um, tutorials, that sort of thing. And that's how she's going to do culling of submissions. And I think that's a really great idea. I really like that. I love the idea of uh, each issue being devoted to a specific skill. Topic. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. Because if you're looking for something like, oh, I'm looking for fractal spinning, mm -hmm. I would know that that would be in the spinning exactly. with color issue. Yeah. So I don't have to think, now, what number issue right. could that be in? I, I'm very much looking forward to JC's magazine. And I want to thank anybody who contributed to her Kickstarter because it was fully funded in like Yay. nine days. And she's still raising money because every little bit will continue to uh, help get them off the and ground. she said she's going to add up some new prizes mm -hmm. too. So that's very, very cool. So we are pro JC Box. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> we had a great um, time in her class as well. Yes. And for anybody who spins and is going to SSK, she is going to be a teacher. And she... Um, is a wonderful and entertaining one. So if you are considering spinning or if you're a new spinner or if you've been spinning 20 years, you should definitely consider. If you're considering spinning, you should take it up now That's so true. that you can get some skills for her class because her classes are not beginning right. spinning classes. Yeah, you do need to have spun before. You don't necessarily need to be able to spin a three-ply three ply sock weight, but yeah. you need to know how the motions work. Yep. Um, so for favorite things, I have a couple of things I got in the mail that I wanted to show. Cool. So one was from Sadie of the Yarn Borer podcast. I had sent her some stuff a long time ago, like a year ago or something. And I never expected anything in return because it was just, I had been watching her show and it was really amusing me and entertaining me. So I sent her a present. Um, and she sent me a present in return, which I didn't expect. Or so pretty. So she sent me the first thing was this handmade bag with um, ice, cream. ice cream on it. 
and she included a toy for Neelix, which he destroyed in under seven minutes. <laughs> wow. Because he's a chewer. Um, and But thank you anyway. He did enjoy mm -hmm. it for those seven minutes, and he still carries around the carcass. And <laughs> then she sent me some hand spun. So this is Ooh, hand spun. Pretty. I like those tags, too. Um, and the color is Wicked Witch of the East. It's 100% superwash merino, and it's around 367 yards. And the fiber carrot says, you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's these beautiful colors of yarn. I love it. Thank you so much, Sadie. I love getting presents in the mail. And um, I love presents of any kind. It's true. And then I got from Sharon. She sent a surprise for the obsession. Oh, cool. cool. And <gasps> it's my favorite fabric. Right, let me think of you. And it says... Leslie, here's a bag I made for Deep Stash Dive Contest. Love Sharon. How fun! And it's one of the huge sweater bags. And Sharon does a really good job. They're inter interfaced, um, or the, the sewing is done really well. There's no end stuck out or anything. So. And it says Fala La. Yes, it's all about La La. <laughs> so this is also a prize for Deep Stash Dive December. So thank you, Sharon. Sharon is such a sweetheart. She is sweet. Everybody should have a friend like Sharon. But don't take my Sharon. <laughs> Um, so this is another prize for Deep Stash Dive December. And I love seeing everybody's stuff. I, there's a couple of people who have sewn those little, or have knitted those little crocheted Christmas Christmas trees. And I was like, mm. man, if I had seen that two weeks ago, I would have knitted a bunch of them. That little light one? Yeah. Oh, super cute. Yeah, like that would have been awesome. I could have knitted mm -hmm. one for, you know, people in the office or whatever. Very cute. But, um, that's a great there's idea. There's been some wonderful yeah, things. Yeah, there's people who knit sweaters and all kinds so of stuff. So, if you're new to, deep, uh, to the Knit Girls, if this is your first time watching us, we're doing this thing in December called Deep Stash Dive December, where you found some old yarn and you used it up. Yep. That's the rule. And it can be that's fiber it. that you spin up, it can be yarn that you knit up. It could be fiber that you spun a long time ago and it's been sitting there. Yeah, and you want to knit up. We're not strict on the rules. <laughs> we really aren't. I mean, So you're just knitting it in December, basically. And posting a picture. Yep. Every picture or every separate item that you take a picture of will get you an entry and we'll draw the, the mm -hmm. for prizes in January. We and when I, yeah. We'll the whole month of December to And when it. I get home, I'm going to try to take pictures of all the prizes that save the spot like the second spot to do that yeah which is fun and tom I'll do this that time too. of year tom is quite a commodity yeah, i'm sure every single one of our viewers is nodding their head <laughs> i had the crazy idea i was gonna make quilts for everybody for christmas freaking crazy never gonna happen i bought the fabric i bought lots of fabric <laughs> We bought more. Well, I bought more fabric today. today. <laughs> Went to Joanne's today because I had to pick up something for my sister. Yeah. So um, also, I got another thing in the mail, and this actually I got two more things. Do you have anything That's you want to talk pretty. about? Because no. I feel like I'm monopolizing. I'm going to talk about the Lost City and its contest okay. in a couple minutes. So. So this. We didn't do show notes today. Yeah. This is all off the cuff. <laughs> I was too excited to have Lori in my house to worry about show notes. We would have had to find a notebook, too. I still have the notebook. From, Do you? Mm -hmm. Aww. I keep all the things. I mean, I always know where they are, but I keep them. That's very cool. Um, so this is my last trifecta of awesome club shipment, and this is from Fibernip. And this is a 75% BFL, 25% Tessa Silk, and it is Winter Solstice colorway. It's really, really And it's pretty. a gradient dye, and I love gradient dyes. So it's this beautiful orangey to it's kind of the pre-dawn colors to the um, twilighty colors and I really like I that one. So that was my last shipment of that club. I don't know if they're going to do it again. I assume so because it's been wildly successful. Um, I may not, well, I really enjoyed every single shipment. I really should try again but I don't know. We'll see. Because they do a lottery every time, mm -hmm. right? They do. And I, you know, just because I enter it doesn't mean I'm going to win the lottery. Yeah. So. I may. We'll see. I'll leave it up to fate. I understand. And then I've got my Into the World. So if you haven't gotten your Into the World club shipment, although you should probably have, because I got this a few I've days been, ago. But, but you I left moved. on Friday. <laughs> I um, moved to physical locations. <laughs> um, if you haven't gotten it, spoiler alert, um, this is the the wood colorway. I'm going to take out because there's a coupon code on here for uh, club members. And basically, it's just a thank you for helping them um, do what they've done this year. And then they give us a coupon code under the bottom. Very sweet. And this is uh, Masham. And it's beautiful. 
beautiful. That's really, really pretty. So gorgeous. I don't know how they continue to make colors I love so much. Well, these ones month. were inspired by paintings. So that's very cool. Was it? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I should read things, but I'm just like, take my money, please. <laughs> I submitted some a couple of things to that oh, photo contest. Okay. That's um, the only reason why I know that. And then they always include a couple of tags that you can put on your finished hands. Yeah. Which I appreciate. So Chris and um, James, is that his name? I think it's James. Her significant other, who is very cool and funny. We got to talk to him at Ronde. And we talked to him at Maryland. Chief Maryland, Maryland. yeah. Um, they're just too funny and too cool. They're very nice people. And I love this club. If you are a new-ish spinner or if you're looking to join a club, I would recommend, I don't know, there might be a wait list. There is a wait list. But There's definitely a wait list. It's for worth both. it to get on the list for when it comes up available. I would get on the list. They're very reasonable price. They're like mid-20s per shipment and that includes shipping. Mm -hmm. So I would I would get on the list if you're interested in a club. And now there's two different fiber clubs. There's her the Lux, Luxury, yes. which is more of a silk blend every mm -hmm. month, which is nice, but I like variety. I do too. So I'm on the regular one, and Mom's in the regular one as well. So Masham, which was one of our Expand the mm -hmm. Horizons fibers before, is more of a longer wool, but yeah. it will be so, it's definitely an outerwear. It's the wear, nicest be prep of Masham awesome. I've ever seen. And I expect that now. I've come to the point where I expect that from Chris and James and they never disappoint. But that's one of the beauties of a club like this is you never know what fiber you're gonna get. So you're forced into trying new things. And I, I appreciate that. So um, there's that. And then I got some presents. Yay! Because people like to give me presents. Well, that, that sounded very obnoxious. <laughs> I'm sorry. Our friend Jessica, who's a modern. I, I feel really bad now. I did not mean it that way. My friends like to give me presents, and so, I like to give them presents, Jess and I am not a snob. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I feel bad now. But yes, Jessica gave us presents. She's a mod in our group, mm -hmm. so she gave us both a uh, hat pattern. Yes, it was a cute... I think it's right here. So it was a cute little package, and it had this hat and the yarn to make it. So thank you, Jessica. We love you, and Jessica. And mine's purple. And it's she, the thistle color. She right? knows that I like reds. So. That's Long John, right? Yep, Long John's, which Laura had gotten a skein of this for me as well. So I'll now have two in my stash. It's pretty cool. And you can make like a set. Laura got me presents from Arkansas. Oh, I was like, I did? Yeah. <laughs> you did. That's right. And I it's also that. red. Alicia goes around, which is great because I've wanted to try this worsted and I never, and I haven't. So this will give me a chance to, I think my son is tap dancing upstairs. <laughs> He's just running around with me. Like, so I, I'm you. sorry. I don't. Anyway, so this is stable, of course, stable's worsted. And this is the. It doesn't say. Oh, it doesn't have a colorway. Mm -hmm. Well, it's beautiful red colorway. And then she also got me Magic and Moonshine. This gradient is called Iris, and it's a cool radiant yarn. So it's not a striping yarn. They had a citron out of it that was really, really So pretty. it's it's like color blocks. So it'll start with one and then go to the So the colors don't repeat. It's like but Nora they're blocks. or a Liberty wool yeah. to give some mm -hmm. more. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. So ideas are welcome. Um, so it's got yellow, green, blue, and purple. So... Debating how much it's further really cool. I'm going to go. Oh, oh look, it's Helix. The door is open. Awesome. <laughs> Come back here. Kobe, we're recording, sweetheart. I am. My bubbles. He knows. <laughs> okay, Come leave on. him alone. It's fine. I'll be upstairs in a few minutes, okay? Right. We have a gingerbread house to make, and he's very impatient about making the gingerbread house. And I'm very impatient about me up. It's not coming. Okay, go upstairs. There he goes. Oh, he's following you. He's chasing you. He's gonna get yes. you. Oh, go see Kobe. <laughs> he thinks he's being cute, and y'all probably think he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so anything besides the Lost City thing we want to talk about? Like? Mm, not that I know of. I totally monopolized this show. I'm so no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I adore your face. Hi. <laughs> So we have a drawing for Lost City Knits, and we have a new contest. So the last was that gorgeous, gorgeous uh, pinks and greens. It was their Turbulence colorway of, let me get the base up here, because I'm going to not say it right, Twin Canyon Fingering. 
which is a 50% merino, 50% silk blend. Yes, it's beautiful. So it's that yarn right there, which is gorgeous and lovely in real life, and I almost stole it. Oh, let me do a random I did not. generator for you. I would appreciate that. So in that thread, we are doing numbers 2 through 261. Now, you do have to be a member of our group to win. Or were there a couple that weren't? There were. But I think that's because I tweeted about it, and then yeah. it got retweeted a couple yeah. times. I'm on Twitter now um, as Lala Knits one so you can catch me on there. And Leslie tweets as the Knit Girls account on there, and that's where she announces the show and yep. some other stuff. So it's two through... 261. Oops, 261. Yep. So two through 261. I'm going to hit generate. And it says the winner is, it's thinking, number six. <laughs> wow, that's pretty early on. Yeah. So number six is <gasps> Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie. So S-T-E-F-U-N-I. So the question was what makes a, the perfect yarn? And she's perfect yarn, knows what it wants to be, and so do you. Always works well with the pattern chosen and isn't splitty and is a great color. It's also just soft enough and not alpaca or mohair because I'm allergic to the nose. <laughs> and I love she's got, um, there was a, okay, so both of us are very big um, Firefly fans. Yes. And her Ravatar is the You Can't Take the Sky From Me shirt that they had on, yeah. um, whatchamacallit, a couple Woot. weeks ago. Not Woot. Um, T-Fury? T-Fury. Is that Stephanie Bold? I think it is. Is that the designer for some reason? I think so. No, it's not. It's not. She's just Stephanie, and yeah. she lives in Austin, Texas. Sweet. Well, congratulations, Yay. Stephanie. Private she, message, Laura. Yep. She posts in our group all the time. So that's awesome. And then we have a new prize. Are yes. you already? Laura brought it with her. She's prepared. <laughs> it's like she's a professional podcaster. <laughs> if only. Ooh, that is beautiful. Isn't that pretty? So this is Lost City Knits. It's their Oak Barn Merino Lace, which is a thousand yards. That is awesome. In the Carillo's colorway. Yep. Cerillo's. C-E-R-I-L-L-O-S. It is beautiful. So this would be a gorgeous pie shawl. Yeah. Um, any of the larger... How... What, uh, your one that's got the beads, not even star, but Shipwreck. the other one. Is that around a thousand yards? It's or a little bit more? more. Okay. Yeah. So, but like absolutely gorgeous shawl, yeah. definitely. That would be beautiful for lace because it would show it off fantastically. Oh, yeah. Definitely with the solids. Mm -hmm. So pretty. So, um, we decided this is going to be in our group again, mm -hmm. in the Ravelry group, on Knit Girls, um, on Ravelry. There we go. In the Ravelry, Knit Girls. Is it going to be on Ravelry? On Ravelry. Is Ravelry where it's going to be? It is. Ravelry, Ravelry, Ravelry. So to win this one, all you have to do is post your favorite holiday tradition. It doesn't necessarily have to be Christmas. It could be your favorite Valentine's Day tradition. It can be your favorite Thanksgiving tradition. Easter. Whatever. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever. Just tell us your Memorial favorite tradition. Memorial Day, Fourth of July. Because I'm always Boxing looking Day. To... Oh, Boxing Day is a good one. They have sales on Boxing Day. Like all these Canadian people are having, a, like, on Etsy, they're having sales the day after Christmas, Sweet. which is Boxing Day. Very cool. So just tell us what your favorite tradition is, and that's an entry into winning this, and we'll draw that next week. Cool. Um, you must be here to win, yes. obviously, and we will poll next Sunday. So Is this our last this. giveaway? Or no, we, we have one more. The awesome. Rumpel Stilt Skin, which is that gold, like, silk. Oh, it came to your house. So I'm it. leaving this one for you to mail. Oh. <laughs> my dog is about us. Come here. <laughs> He's like, now that you want me up, I do not want to be up. He is a big, giant lap dog. Are you a lap dog, Neelix? Mm, go see Laura. Do y'all remember when I held him up and you, we asked for name <laughs> suggestions? And now he's so big yes. and he was terrified of my sister and brother-in-law. So we played Cards Against Humanities last night. Like, yesterday was the best day ever. <laughs> so I got to hang out with my sister and brother-in-law, who are tons of fun. I got to eat a bagel. My favorite food in the world. They don't have bagel shops in Mississippi. <laughs> um, I got to... Go to Ikea. Go to Ikea and Five Below, which is like... The little, yeah, it's like a dollar oh, it's store. Oh, fun. Sort of, yeah. Everything's $5 like and store. below. Mm -hmm. it's, but it's got, like, really good stuff. Yeah, I went there once after she recommended it. Lots of fun stuff. And then um, I got to hang out with Becky as Matt went Christmas stocking uh shopping for her 
And then I got to come over here and we played, and we had a great meal. Michael cooked mm -hmm. this fabulous meal and we played Cards Against Humanities. Yep. That's or a good humanity. Night. It was fun. And I won. Yes. Laura with 30 did cards. Yes. Something ridiculous. Laura is the most screwed up of all of us. <laughs> I would tell you the cards twisted. that she played, but then we'd have people unsubscribing, so. And we'd have to change the rating on the podcast. <laughs> That's true. Cards Against Humanity, not a PG game. No. Like NC-17. It's fun for adults. Yeah. Um, if you have a very open mind. But uh, otherwise, it's it's not a game that kids can play. Oh, I was going to try to find off. That so, is not biting off. Um, anything else? Laura's yeah. going to come back. She's going to spend Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with her family. I am. And then she, I get her for a couple more days. And, and we're then gonna I fly back on Friday. Plan some fun stuff. Neelix, go find your piggy. <gasps> Where's your piggy? You have a piggy? Sorry, he's looking at me to death. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just wanted to say happy holidays. Yes. Whether you celebrate Christmas or not, have a great week. And everybody should tell Laura to move to New Jersey. <laughs> She loves it. When la, she gets those la, 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 <laughs> la. <laughs> and um, yeah, just happy holidays, and we love your faces, and we will see you again in a week. Yay! Well, a week? A week. All right. <laughs> Bye, Bye y'all.